If you want to learn how to make an AI image generator in just a few minutes, then stick around. And some of the images you see on screen were generated with this technique. It's stupid simple, you don't need to be an expert programmer, and just in a few lines of code you can generate stuff that looks like this. I've got a capybara saying hello world on a sign, I've got a programmer touching grass, that's the prompt I used for this one, I've got this kind of cyberpunk like character with tattoos in a rainy alley, I've got this mystical kind of wetlands with forests and stuff. Stuff. And then I've got this, uh, what do you call it, Roman soldier standing outside of a coliseum. You can put in any prompt you want. You can generate unlimited images completely for free on your own computer. So let me show you how we do that. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now in this video, I've included two methods to generate these AI images completely for free. Now the first method is using something known as Google Colab. This is free, and this is for any of you that don't have a powerful computer, maybe you don't have a graphics card, or you just have a really slow machine. That's because the AI models we're gonna use to do this are quite large. They can be 60 and 17 gigabytes, and if you wanna run them locally, it is a little bit demanding on the hardware. So for any of you that don't have intense hardware, just follow along with this first method. However, if you do have something like a powerful GPU, you've got a recent computer, you've got some good compute, and you wanna try running this locally, you totally can, and that's gonna be the second method. And I've also included a guide linked in the description on my GitHub that shows you everything that I do in this video, so you can just follow along with this if you're getting lost. All right. So the Google Colab method is stupid simple. All you have to do is just go to this link that I'm leaving in the description, and you need to make sure that you connect to a GPU runtime. Now, Google Colab is this free environment provided by Google, which allows you to access GPUs and to run code on them. So what we're gonna do is use something known as the stable diffusion model. This isn't the newest, you know, most up-to-date model possible, but it's one that will run in Google Colab for us with the constraints that we have to generate these AI images. This comes from a platform known as Hugging Face where there's all kinds of open source models. And later in the video, I'll show you a more powerful model that you can try running locally. So all you've gotta do is just open this link that I'll leave down below. You need to press run on this first cell. It's gonna install all of the dependencies that you need. And then you need to make sure that you're connected to a GPU runtime. Now to do that, you can find this runtime command right here and you can go change runtime type. Now from here, you wanna make sure you've selected Python 3 and that you're on the T4 GPU or whatever GPU that you can access, but you wanna make sure you're not on CPU. From there, you'll be able to access these higher end NVIDIA GPUs and you can run this code by simply running the cell. When you run the cell, you might get some message like this. It's just because I was the one who made this notebook. So just go with run anyways. And then you'll see that there's a prompt right here. So I've just done a house in front of an ocean and then I've specified the width and the height of the image. So this will take a second to run. And the first time you run it, it may need to download some dependencies. So just give it a second in order to run and kind of get everything set up. And then once it's finished, it will be able to generate the images and you can just keep rerunning this as many times as you want and changing the prompt to generate new images. So let me show you what the result is. All right, so this is just finished and you see that this is the image that I generated. And if I wanna download this, I can just right click on it and click on save image as. Now, if you wanna do another image, what you can do is simply change the prompt. You can adjust the width and the height, run this again, and then same thing, you can save that image. The reason it will take a long time when it starts is it needs to download this entire model, but once it's downloaded, it'll get stored in the cache, and then every time you run this after, it should just take a few seconds to generate the images. Now again, this is using a stable diffusion model from something called Hugging Face, which has a bunch of open source models, and there are ones that are better than this and significantly larger, but you can't run them in Google Colab, at least not for free, because of the limitations with the GPU. So this is the first stupid simple way in order to do this. You can inspect the code if you want, but it's very, very simple. And now what I'm going to do is show you how we can run this locally by writing our own Python code and really leverage some higher end hardware if we have access to that. So now it's time to get into the fun part, which is running this locally. Now stick with me because there are a few setup steps here. It's not super complicated, but you just need to make sure you go through all of them. So this works on your machine. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to the Stable Diffusion 3.5 large website. Now this is Hugging Face and I'm just showing you this model because this is the first one I'll show you how to run. Now I'm gonna show you two, the one that you saw previously, the 2.1 model, which can be ran on pretty much any computer. And then this one, 3.5, which will require some higher end hardware, like a brand new NVIDIA GPU in order to run it in a reasonable amount of time. 
just to give you an idea of how large this model is and how good it is actually, I have an RTX 4090 right now in my computer and to generate one image, it takes about a minute and a half. So that's quite a bit of time to do a single image. So imagine if you're running this on your CPU, for example, it could take 20, 30 minutes to do a single image, which obviously isn't ideal. Anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an account on Hugging Face. So go to this link. Again, it will be available from the description. And if not there, you'll find it in the readme file of the GitHub. Go to this kind of little avatar, wherever it says login, make a new account. Once you make the new account, go back to this page and you'll see something that asks you to accept the license agreement. In order to use these newer models, you need to accept the licensing agreement and say you'll use it properly. So you just need to fill that in. It's free, don't worry, you don't need to pay for anything. And then once you accept that, your Hugging Face account will be able to use this model. We'll come back to this in a second, so leave this page open. Okay. Once you've done that, the next thing we're gonna do is make sure you have Python installed on your system. You have some code editor like VS Code, which I imagine many of you already do. And then if you're using an NVIDIA GPU on Windows or Linux, you're gonna need to install NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit. This link again is from the GitHub README. This will allow you to actually utilize this within PyTorch, which is what we're gonna be using to run this model. So make sure you install CUDA if you wanna use your NVIDIA GPU. The link is right here. If you click on it, it will bring you over to the downloads and you can download it for Windows or Linux. Just download the most recent version. Okay, coming back here, after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clone this GitHub repository and make a new virtual environment. So what I'm gonna do is copy the clone link for this GitHub repo, again, in the description. And if you're new to coding and you don't know how to do that, you can just download this as a zip folder and then open this zip folder in some kind of code editor. Okay. So now I'm gonna open up VS Code because this is my code editor of choice. What I'm gonna do is just go to the source control. I'm gonna go clone repo. I'm just gonna paste this URL. Okay, I'm just gonna clone this to my desktop and let's wait for this to clone and then open up this folder, okay? For any of you that use Git, I know you know how to clone the repo yourself. So you just do Git, clone, clone the repo or you can do what I did in VS Code. All right, anyways, you need to get these files in some kind of folder in your code editor. And now that we're here, we're gonna make a new virtual environment to install these dependencies inside of. What we need to do is install a few dependencies related to Hugging Face and then some for PyTorch, which will allow us to actually execute these models locally. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna type Python dash M V E N V and then ENV. Now you're gonna do this in your terminal or your command prompt. In this case, you see I'm inside of VS Code and I'm doing this in the folder where my Git repo was. So wherever you cloned, you're gonna get in that folder and then you're gonna run this command to make a new virtual environment. If you're on Linux or Mac, you can change this to be Python 3. Okay, so this is gonna make an isolated place where we can install all of our Python dependencies and now we need to activate the environment. If you're on Windows, the command to activate is dot and then slash, and this is gonna be env because that's what we called our virtual environment, slash scripts, slash, and then activate. Now, if you are on Mac or Linux, this is gonna change and it is gonna be source env slash bin slash activate. Okay, so make sure you use the correct command to activate the environment. You'll know if it's activated if you see this env as a prefix in your terminal. Now we're gonna install the different dependencies that are in requirements.txt, again, related to hugging phase, transformers, the things that we need to run these models. So to do that, we're gonna type pip install dash r and then requirements.txt. That's gonna read through all of these and install them as dependencies, okay? Stick with me here, guys. I know there's a lot of setup steps. All of this is written in the git readme. So if I'm going too fast for you, you can follow along with all of them in here, okay. So once these are installed, the next step is to install PyTorch. So let's go and get that set up. So PyTorch is gonna be a little bit different depending on what operating system you're on. So click the link that I have here where it says install PyTorch in the readme and go to the PyTorch website. Looks like this. What we're gonna do is make sure we're on the stable build. We select our operating system, in my case I'm on Windows, select pip, select Python. If you're using an NVIDIA enabled GPU and you're using CUDA, then select the newest version of CUDA or whatever you installed. Otherwise, choose CPU, okay? So if you don't have a GPU and you wanna try running this on your CPU, which I will warn you is gonna be very slow, then select CPU. Otherwise, go with CUDA. Okay, now we're gonna copy this run command. 
We're going to go back into VS Code. Hopefully, this is going to finish in one second. And then we're going to paste this command and install this after the dependencies. It's very important that we install PyTorch after we install the other dependencies to make sure that when we install the dependencies, it doesn't override what um, the PyTorch install should be, because that will vary based on your operating system. OK, so this is finished. So now I'm going to copy in this command that I got from the PyTorch website. I'm going to hit Enter. It's going to install PyTorch, and then we should be good to go. Just a few more commands, and we're ready to run the code. So all of this is installed, and now we're so close to running this. Last thing we need to do is we need to go back to Hugging Face. From Hugging Face, we need to go to our account. We need to go to Settings. And from Settings, we need to go to Access Tokens. Now, we need to get an Access Token so that we are authorized to pull this newer model and run it from our computer. So we're going to click on Access Tokens. We're going to go Create New Token. And we just need to give this token access to this. Read access to contents of all public gated repos we can access. That's all it needs. So just check this box. For the token name, go with whatever you want. I'm just going to call it test. OK, and then I'm going to make this token. Now, copy this token. Obviously, don't give it to other people. I'm going to delete this one after the video. Go back to VS Code. And what we're going to type in now is hugging face dash CLI space login. OK, this command is in the readme as well. Hugging face dash CLI login. And it's going to ask us to put our token here. OK. So we're going to put our token here by simply right clicking with our mouse. That's going to copy it in. You also can use Control V or Command V on your keyboard. OK, we're going to add this as a Git credential. And now the token has been added. Now we can actually go ahead and run our code. OK, so to run our code, we have two options. We can run the 3.5 script or the 2.1 script. Now, I'll show you a few changes you can make here so that when you run this script, it works properly. Keep in mind, it can take a while depending on how many images and what kind of hardware you have. OK, so the 2.1 script here is what most of you should be able to run. And you can run this on your CPU if you have to. Now, if you have an NVIDIA enabled GPU, this line right here where it says pipe is equal to pipe.2 CUDA, just leave it as it is. Don't change it. If you are on CPU, if you don't have a GPU in your system, you haven't installed CUDA, change this to say CPU. OK, so that's it. You just got to change that. Then you have some prompts here. Now you can add as many prompts as you want. And I've set this script up so that it will download on, or sorry, not download, save all of the images that you generate from these prompts. If you want it to go faster, obviously remove the number of prompts, make it just one prompt and it'll go as fast as it possibly can. Another thing here this num inference steps. If you reduce this, it will go faster, but you'll get a worse quality image. If you increase it, it should be a better quality image, but it's going to take longer. So play with this depending on the type of hardware that you have. OK, that's the two one. This is using kind of that older model that we looked at previously in Google Colab. But if you want to use the really good model that generates really high quality images, you want to run the 3.5 script. Now, same thing in this script. You can change from CUDA to say CPU if you're using CPU, but it's going to take a really long time. And you can change the prompt. In this case, I just have the prompt as a programmer touching grass. And then you can adjust the number of inference steps if you want to make this be slower or faster and adjust the performance. This is really something to play with, but I'm just warning you because it does take a long time to run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the 3.5 script. To do that, all you've got to do is type Python and then the name of the file, which is 3-5.py. OK, that'll run the code for you. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can try Python 3. When I run this, it's going to download the model. And this can take a little bit of time depending on your internet connection. This is about 16 gigabytes that it needs to download locally to your computer. So if you don't want to do that, don't run the code or cancel the code and delete the virtual environment that you've got here. But you do need to download the models if you want to run them locally. Same thing will happen with the 2.1 model, but that one will be a little bit smaller and will run faster. All right, so now this is running and I want to show you what this information means so that you can see how long this is going to take. So this here tells you what step you're currently at relative to the number of inference steps. You can see I'm just at one out of 20. Now it'll show you the percentage as well. And it will show you how long it's taken so far to get to this step. That's what this 35 seconds mean. It then shows you an estimate on how long it will take to generate this single image. 
and it will show you the number of iterations that you're doing per second. That's what this 35 seconds means. All right, so finally this code has finished. It took a lot longer than I was expecting, but I believe that's because I'm recording as well. So my GPU is being used like twice by this as well as my recording software. Anyways, it did generate the image. So if I come down here and I look at image zero.png, you can see this is what I got. Uh, what did I write? Programmer touching grass or something. And this is the image. Now, obviously you can give it a way better prompt than that, but we did get something. It's pretty high quality considering uh, the prompt that I gave it. Now, just for experimentation here, I'll try running the two one model just to show you how much faster that is. I'm just gonna go with one prompt here. So let's go with the cyberpunk character. And to do that, we can just go Python and then 2-1.py. We can run this and let's see how long that takes. Okay, so that took about three seconds on my GPU. And you can see that this is the image that I got. Uh, not very great considering what I asked it for, but yes, we did get an image and it did work and it was way faster. So there you go, those are the scripts and how you generate these AI images. Now, if you're interested in learning more about AI, LLMs, Python, kind of programming and problem solving in general, then make sure you check out the sponsor of today's video, which is Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. They adopt a first principles approach, ensuring you understand the why behind each concept. Every lesson is interactive, engaging you in hands-on problem solving, which has proven to be six times more effective than simply watching lectures. The content is developed by top-notch educators, researchers, and professionals from renowned institutions like MIT, Caltech, and Google. Brilliant emphasizes enhancing your critical thinking abilities through active problem solving rather than memorization. As you learn specific subjects, you're simultaneously training your mind to think more effectively. Consistent daily learning is crucial and Brilliant makes it effortless with their bite-sized lessons, allowing you to acquire meaningful knowledge in just a few minutes each day, perfect for replacing idle screen time. Additionally, Brilliant offers a comprehensive range of computer science and Python courses, as well as extensive AI workshops guiding you from a complete beginner to an expert through practical, hands-on lessons. Try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash techwithtim or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.